which is perfect. Um, true. So you can you can consider um, a matrix a multiplication for a vector gives you another vector and a vector field quite obviously. And what can happen? So when you multiply your matrix with with a, with a, with a vector, the vector can um, get longer. So there's a strong scaling operation, or it can um, change actually the kind of orientation. Those things might happen, right? Um, if our or we are interested in those vectors where um, the matrix multiplication is just a scaling for this matrix, then we can do a very simple trick. We can say, okay, instead of using a complex matrix uh, multiplication with our vector, we can just say we scale our vector with a certain scalar value in lambda, which is our eigenvalue. Again, for a couple of vectors, the matrix acts just as a scaling operation on this vector. The orientation is the same. And instead of using a complex mat a, a, a matrix multiplication in order to just scale a vector, we exchange this matrix by the scalar value to get the same result. And this is an eigenvalue. So you can, for certain vectors, exchange the matrix by a scalar value and nevertheless gets the same output. This is the idea of eigenvalues. Okay. You got it? This is important. By the way, what happens? I mean, you are pretty familiar with math. I know this. Um, what happens? when you have here rotation matrix. For a rotation matrix, applied that the uh, length of the vector remains the same, but the orientation changes. This is a rotation, right? What about eigenvalues for those rotation matrices? Is there one? No. I mean, there is no scaling. In those cases, when you here consider a rotation matrix, then you would get um, complex eigenvalues. And the imaginary part tells you something about the rotational behavior of the matrix. Or in other words, if you can also have a mixture in between some scaling, some uh, orientation operations, um, the complex part of the eigenvalues um, gives you a hint about the rotational behavior of the matrix, and the real part gives you a hint about the scaling behavior. For so the rotational uh, matrix, uh, the, the real value would be the scaling part, which would be one if it's just doing a rotation. The, the real value of this complex value would be one. The real, the real value is zero. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. We have just um, imaginary parts for, for those um, matrices. Yeah. But this is very interesting because you consider quite often um, eigenvalues of matrices. Uh, for instance, uh, when you have MRT data or something like that. Uh, the first derivative is for an IT vector. Uh, it's, it's a vector, the second is a matrix, the Hessian, for instance, and you can consider the eigenvalues, and you get some information about rotational and scaling operation just to look at the eigenvalues of your second derivative for your MIT data, for instance. I mean, the guys do that. The guys do. Okay. However, eigenvalues. Uh, we can exchange the matrix for certain scaling operations, and this is our eigenvalues for a certain set of uh, vectors, the eigenvectors. Of course. It's not possible for all vectors, but for a certain set of vectors, and these are our eigen for vectors. And how? What is it? Just one question. So yeah. So if I have complex angular values, I know that it's still a, a, a scaling and a rotation. Exactly. You have a rotation component in, in your matrix and a scaling component. Actually, you can find the decomposition. Mm -hmm. Just in one pure scaling and one pure uh, rotation matrix. But I wouldn't say, I mean, this is a complex um, value, but it's uh, distinguished between real and imaginary values. I wouldn't say it's not a complex part, so the, the, the value is complex. How, how is it able to calculate eigenvalues? You know that. Tell me, what, I, what do I have to do? I want to calculate eigenvalues. Use MATLAB. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, 
in the first place. So we have to make a strange operation here. So at first we put the uh, this side over there. Um, and therefore we have to include this identity, E to the identity matrix, um, to allow the operation matrix minus a matrix. Okay? It's just a trick to um, get a matrix, or in this case a vector here, and a vector here um, where it's allowed to do these minus operations. However, it's just the same equation. And we put the x, all the eigenvectors are out of this equation, and this is something that we have to solve in order to find our eigenvalues. This is a basic equation. Again, this is just a matrix which is zero, or it's stacked on this main diagonal there as well. Okay, and the idea is quite simple now. We have two possibilities. We can say um, to fulfill this equation, we want to make this of part of the equation zero or that part. Um, so you consider the eigenvectors as to be zero, it doesn't make any sense. I mean it's not a vector anymore. And therefore we um, forbid zero vectors. We just say okay we want to have um, vectors here which are not equal to a zero vector and this means we have to find a way to make this uh, side here to zero. So A minus our eigenvalues identity has to be zero. And this is quite easy because this part of the, uh, is, is zero when the determinant of this matrix is zero. Clear so far? Okay. And this is what we have to do. So determinant of our matrix minus the eigen or our values scaled with the identity has to be zero. That's it. And this is straightforward. I mean, you get a certain polynomial here, you, you, you solve your polynomial, and then you are done, and you know all the eigenvalues. Usually, you expect our n different eigenvalues uh, when your matrix is an n times n matrix. Or less. But definitely not more. Okay. Uh, quite a simple example. Here's the three times three matrix. We are looking for its eigenvalues. This means we have to sum up this equation. Um, we put the matrix uh, over here. We put this side to the lambda. So I mean, it's just the identity times lambda. So it's clear. Over here, our uh, has to be zero. Here is just one certain matrix. So two minus lambda, four minus three, and so on. So this matrix. Uh, we are looking for the determinant of this matrix and one of uh, the here the zeros. Uh, there's a lot of the ring rule. We get a certain point on here for the determinant. It has to be zero. We can solve it. I mean, high school, uh, high school uh, uh, people can solve it pretty easy. Uh, and then we get three different eigenvalues, zero, one, minus two. By the way, zero is always there. I don't know what you want to get to do. Okay, um, our method. So this way we get our eigenvalues for this matrix here. This means there are certain vectors that I can multiply with this matrix or with this value and I get the same result. I don't know. So if you multiply the vector with zero, you have a zero vector. Zero is true, right? Yeah, if you multiply your, your, your matrix by a vector, it can also be a zero vector. The line value. Okay. Um, as I already said, we have up to n different eigenvalues for our um, n times n matrix, or less. Of course, we can have double eigenvalues. At the end, we're just solving um, a zero operation on the polynom, uh, the characteristic of polynom, as I before. Um, and then there's something very strange that's known as spectrum of a matrix. So usually we consider all the eigenvalues of a matrix in a descending order and can put them in such a nice diagram. And this is a spectrum of a matrix. 